So with the new season of Twin Peaks coming out, I'm sure you guys are as excited as I am. Um, I know people who have watched the show since it came out um, have been waiting, you know, 25 years for the show to return. And now that it's back, um, I figured I would give a little review um, of the episode so far and also a little analysis because I'm sure a lot of people are wondering what the heck is going on um, in the Twin Peaks universe and I'm going to give my interpretation of the events that have happened in season three so far. So what I'm going to do is break this up into a review section that is spoiler free and then I'm going to have a spoiler section towards the end where I talk a little bit about some things that have come up already and what I think they might mean for you know the universe and the characters of Twin Peaks. So starting off the review, um, I'm going to say the cinematography of the new season is excellent. The cinematography is by Peter Deming, and uh, I think he does a great job of bringing Twin Peaks to this new modern um, era that it's taking place in instead of the uh, 90s soft, dreamy film look that the show was famous for. And I think that it's a, a good decision um, that they made because I think that um, working with Lynch, uh, Peter Deming has had the opportunity to really bring the show to a modern audience um, without taking away the overall aesthetic of the show. Um, so that's something that I'm really um, happy about and impressed by. Also, uh, you'll notice that the show now is in a 16 by 9 more film aspect ratio um, as opposed to the original series was shot in 4x3, which was because of uh, the limitations of television screens back then. But um, I personally, um, I really enjoy watching things in the 4x3 aspect ratio. I think that having less room to work with gives you um, opportunity for a lot of interesting compositions, but going along with the theme of bringing Twin Peaks into a, a modern time now, I think that they did a really good job with um, switching over to the 16 by 9 aspect ratio without losing, you know, the feel of Twin Peaks. Um, and also having more screen space to work with, I think, gives uh, the cinematographer and Lynch and the, the set department uh, more liberty to kind of place things around and work with their set um, and have more of it on screen, which gives the audience a lot more to look at. Also, the uh, intro is different. It keeps the same song, which is timeless, classic intro Twin Peaks song that we all know and love. But um, the shots are different, obviously. They're reshot. Um, some different locations. I know there's like some drone or aerial footage. Um, and also I noticed that uh, towards the end they work in the Black Lodge imagery, which I think is really cool um, because most of the season so far has a had a lot to do with the Black Lodge and its kind of control over what's going on in Twin Peaks. So I think that was a smart choice made by whoever came up with that idea. <laughs> The sound design in the new season of Twin Peaks is excellent, uh, coming from Lynch as usual. He always has really um, nice, creepy, atmospheric sound design in all of his work, and Twin Peaks is, you know, no exception to that. And um, I've been noticing they're using modern bands um, and artists for the end sequences that take place in the Roadhouse, which I really like. Um, Again, it keeps, I know I keep saying this over and over, but it keeps a modern feel um, putting in, you know, artists that are playing and releasing music today, but still that give the overall vibe and aesthetic uh, sound that Twin Peaks usually offers with its music choices. The acting I could talk about, but obviously if you've seen Twin Peaks, I um, mean, you know anything about the new season, you know that a lot of um, the characters and actors from the original series returned and they are all every bit as charming and funny and creepy as they were in the original series. It's great um, seeing a lot of the actors come back and kind of still be able to fit in that role um, and be in the headspace that they were 25 years ago. I think that's uh, really impressive and shows that they're um, everyone working on this project is really dedicated to, you know, keeping the universe consistent. And then the last thing that I want to talk about in the review section of this video is actually the special effects. There are some new techniques and ways of doing special effects that Lynch has incorporated into the new um, season, and most of them remind me a lot of his old um, kind of stop-motion painting works, like the Six Men Getting Sick and the Amputee. Um, it's a lot of um, 
creepy, unsettling, you know, stop motion, choppy movement, uh, accompanied by some great sound design that just makes for these really creepy, unearthly uh, dream sequences that just get under your skin, and I've, I've been really enjoying those. I'm really happy to see Lynch going back to his roots um, and kind of paying homage to some of his old work and bringing back up some old techniques that he's used in his films and his work before. So, now for the spoiler section. Now, I don't claim to be like a Twin Peaks expert. I mean, I have looked into some analysis of the show and I've kind of made up my own uh, theories about certain things. Uh, one thing that I do know, though, is that a lot of Twin Peaks revolves around kind of balance and the um, interchangeability of good and evil. Like. It's a small American town where everybody's, you know, knows each other and it's all friendly, but really there's these murders and these crazy horrifying things going on. So it's kind of uh, a lot of, I think, what the show deals with thematically is a balance between good and evil and how those kind of are hard to tell the difference sometimes. And one thing, you know, somebody that seems evil can really be good and trying to help and somebody that seems like they're trying to help could also have you know, bad, uh, bad intentions, which we all know, lots of characters in Twin Peaks have some pretty bad intentions. Um, so keeping that in mind, I think that the Black Lodge is the biggest, like, physical metaphor for that in the show, and to me I think that's because, uh, all of these kind of supernatural characters meet in this place to, I, I guess, negotiate and debrief each other about what's going on in this, uh, this, like, supernatural realm, I guess. Um, that's just my theory, but I'm gonna dig a little bit more into that, I guess, as the series progresses. Um, of course we have Cooper, um, in the Black Lodge with his alternative self with some crazy, really funny looking long hair which um, obviously is channeling Bob, which we learn in the last episode of the original series, Cooper might have, you know, a connection or might be possessed or sharing a shell with Bob, if you may. Um, but also, the one-armed man is coming into play a lot, especially with the arm, so I think that we're going to find out he had a lot more to do with the events of the original series than we thought. I've been noticing, um, obviously there's the tagline, the owls are not what they seem. I've been noticing a lot more owls in this series. Um, if you look closely in a lot of shots, there's owls in the background, kind of in the, uh, hidden in the set pieces and things like that. So obviously um, the events of the new season so far have been very, very heavily uh, supernatural or what have you. Um, so I'm really uh, looking forward to that and finding out what the heck is really going on. Also, we have the whole 315, 253 thing, which we learned that 253 is the time that all of the Coopers have to go back to Black Lodge. Also, I did um, notice in one of the dream sequences the big creepy floating face thing that goes by it says Blue Rose, and if you haven't seen um, Fire Walk With Me, the kind of film spin-off that Lynch made of the series. And from what I understand, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, the Blue Rose is basically a metaphor and a representation for Laura Palmer. It was really cool to see um, Lynch throwing a little nod to Fire Walk With Me, the film in there, and also possibly foreshadowing more uh, Laura Palmer involvement in the coming episodes. Um, there's another thing that I picked up on that I don't think is like a really has to do with the plot or anything, but just kind of something I noticed that I figured I'd throw out there in case anybody else had noticed it. Um, there's the part where Lucy is on the phone with Sheriff Truman, and she is very confused um, as to where he is, um, and then when he walks in the door, she like faints and is really terrified by the fact that she was just on the phone with him, yet now he's here. Um, so clearly Lucy doesn't understand modern technology like cell phones and what I thought that might possibly be is Lynch making a joke at people who expected the show to come back and be you know still shot up with that film look with the 4 by 3 aspect ratio and take place in the 90s because um, I know a lot of people um, were hoping that it would just continue um, in that 
you know, time period. So I think that uh, might have been Lynch or Frost, uh, who knows, throwing in a little joke there about people who can't, like, accept change or move on. Um, so I don't know if that's the case, but I thought that was pretty funny. Also, there's just a couple weird things that I noticed that I'm not sure if are Lynch just being David Lynch and just with his whole art is not meant to be understood thing, but there was the one scene where Cooper's like massaging the dude's face and it goes on in one take for like way too long. So I don't know what's going on there. That could be Lynch just having uh, some kind of, you know, dreamish metaphor for something, or it could just be him throwing it in there and being like, I had this idea and it doesn't really mean anything, so interpret it for yourself. Um, another thing that I noticed I thought was weird was in um, either the third or fourth episode, you see uh, towards the beginning Dr. Jacoby just spray painting shovels gold. Um, so I haven't really dug into the uh, really emphasis or hidden meaning behind that if there is any, but uh, if you notice that too and you have any thoughts as to what it might be, uh, drop a comment below and we can try to discuss and figure it out. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I love Twin Peaks and I can't wait to keep covering the rest of the season. Hearing what you guys have to say, uh, doesn't matter if you think my theories are bullcrap and I have no idea what I'm talking about. You know, art is meant to be, uh, art is meant to be interpreted and that's a big thing in a lot of uh, David Lynch's work is that he believes that a lot of uh, good art comes from ideas, um, and those ideas are not necessarily meant to be understood, but more interpreted in a way that any different person can understand or relate to. So with that, I'm gonna end the video here, but um, I will be back um, hopefully next week with another video covering the next few episodes, and uh, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching, guys.